Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Charlene Adiambo, and I'm the Artistic Associate here at PLACO. Welcome to the presentation of The Divine Mission, a play in progress by playwright Zainal Bujalo. We will begin with an introduction to the play's subject, um, Afro-Brazilian artist Artur Bispo do Rosario, and then transition to a moderated panel with the playwright, director Valani Diba, curator Ricardo Rezende, um, with interpretation by writer Camila Santos. There will be time for audience questions, so um, think of your questions and we'll be answering them at the end of the program. Um, and just before questions, we will um, present a staged reading of an excerpt of A Divine Mission. This is one event in a series of events that culminate the 2021 Playco Residency for Black Women Theater Makers, and you can learn more about the residency on our website. I'd like to give a brief land acknowledgement as well. The play company is based in New York City, our office in Manhattan, as well as the rehearsal, performance, and other spaces where I work in New York City are located on the Lenape Hoking homeland of the Lenape people. We recognize that this land was forcibly taken and sovereignty was never ceded. We acknowledge the genocide and displacement of indigenous peoples. We also acknowledge the African people who were enslaved and whose labor built Manhattan during the colonial era and beyond. We acknowledge the harm inflicted upon the indigenous communities and people of, our, people of color across the country. We recognize that this is this public acknowledgement is only one step in the ongoing process of honoring and supporting these communities. One day, I just appeared. That was the response Arthur Bishpo gave when asked about his biography while he was in the psychiatric hospital, Colonia Juliano Moreira, in Rio de Janeiro, an institution he remained in for 50 years of his life it is a privilege to be working on a play based on the eclectic life of Arthur Bishpo de Rosario, who was born in 1909 in Japaratuba, Sergipe, in the northeast of Brazil. And before I introduce the main inspiration for this project, I would like to begin by saying a huge thank you to the play company for the invitation to be a part of this very significant residency and for making the resources required for this research available. Immense gratitude also goes to art curator Ricardo Resende, who is the curator at Museo Bispo do Rosario Arte Contemporanea. The past four months have been spent in very inspiring virtual exchanges with Ricardo as we discussed in depth the life of Arthur Bispo and the objects he created and also ongoing discoveries around the restoration of objects at the museum. Arthur Bishpo was born and raised in the remarkable town of Japaratuba, recognized for its festivities, mainly connected to Catholicism and African-derived religions such as Candomblé and Umbanda. So he was immersed in a rich cultural universe, one in which the celebration of African traditions and beliefs, Catholicism and Amerindian spirituality blended and constituted the collective imagination. Records show that he enlisted in the Navy in 1925, where he exhibited a degree of unruliness. While there, he trained as a professional boxer and even made it to the newspapers. José Santa Rosa López, an ex-Marine and an ex-boxer who fought around the same period, said he had heard stories about how Arthur Bishpo was a bit crazy, brave, confident, a warrior-like boxer with a sturdy right hand and never ran away from a fight. He was known to be a fearless genius. Between 1933 and 1937, he worked in a tram operating company called Light in the city of Rio de Janeiro. There, he suffered an accident in which his foot was crushed and this incident put a spanner in the wheel of his boxing career. A year later, he was fired from the company for non-compliance and an increasing threat to his boss. He then worked as a handyman for the family of the lawyer, José Maria Leone, who defended him after he filed an indemnity action against the company. He lived with the Leone family up until the night of December 22, 1938, when he woke up with hallucinations. 
He wandered through several churches in the federal district and went up the monastery of San Bento, where he announced to a group of monks that he was an emissary of God in charge of judging the living and the dead. Two days later, he was arrested and registered by the police as undocumented and indigent, and he was taken to a hospice. A month later, he was transferred to Colonia Juliano Moreira, located in the suburbs of Jacarepagua in Rio de Janeiro. He was diagnosed with schizophrenic paranoia. Arthur Bishpo received the patient number 01662, which is also a title of one of the situations of the play I'm writing. And he remained there for 50 years before his passing. Following the dictates of voices that spoke to him, Arthur Bishpo began to produce objects with various types of materials. His body of work, comprising over 800 pieces, illustrate his fixation with the reappropriation of objects such as buttons, bottles, paper, card and cutlery, which he repurposed to create elaborate sculptural pieces. His creations have been lauded for their skill and inventiveness with found materials, from embroidered writings and banners, fragments of fabric shredded from old uniforms of other patients, pieces of wood, wires, broom, cardboard, to threads. His form of defamiliarization forces us to see quotidian things quite differently. My introduction to the world of Bishpo de Rosario was first through the majestic Manto da Apresentação, which I saw in a 2019 exhibition in São Paulo, a masterpiece of embroidery. It is one of his more popular pieces made to be worn on the day of the last judgment, a cloak upon which he painstakingly recorded the description of the world for his glorious arrival into heaven. Something Hikado said in our meeting last week is quite accurate. He said that it is often the case that when someone encounters the work and life of Arthur Bishpo, they are driven by emotion. Well, I have never wanted to write a play so badly, and I also have never been engrossed with um, how a character is accurately represented through the use of language of things the language of objects until a divine mission, until I encountered Arthur Bishpo through his work, through documentaries, through months of archival research and through books that were written about him. One of the many themes I am particularly drawn to is that of sea vehicles. And this recalls the work of Michel Foucault, History of Madness, often referenced by experts who try to dissect and analyze the work of Arthur Bishpo de Rosario. And I quote a passage from the book, which goes, water and navigation really have this role, closed on the ship from where one does not escape, the madman is delivered to the river with a thousand arms, to the sea of a thousand parts, to this great uncertainty outside of everything, he is a prisoner in the middle of the frist, the most open of roads, solidly chained to the infinite crossroads. It is the passenger par excellence that is the prisoner of the passage. End of quote. So boats, ships, rafts of the coastal town of Japaratuba and in the navy have certainly informed his creations, still I'm quite curious about the connections to transatlantic travel and more specifically to the Middle Passage. While this play is inspired by the psychopathological and eclectic world of Arthur Bishpo, the events presented are to a large degree fictionalized it is a play in eight situations apportioned to the different phases of Arthur Bishpo's life. Today, excerpts would be read from two of the eight situations by a superb cast of actors, directed by Velani Diva, with Dennis Ho as 
technical and stage manager. Arthur Bishop always insisted that he was not an artist. He had no choice in what he did, no choice in what he said, no choice in the objects he created. In the book A Poetica do Delirio, The Poetics of Delusion, Marta Dantas writes that he refused to comment on his origin, on his family or his culture. He considered himself the son of God. He had been adopted by the Virgin Mary and appeared in the world in her arms. Lord of the Labyrinth, organizer of chaos, the one who was chosen to judge the living and the dead. Arthur Bishop took his divine mission seriously. He read newspapers to keep abreast of world affairs as he carefully embroidered and put things together for the final day of judgment. A divine mission seeks to illustrate the beautiful mind, the passionate individual that was Arthur Bishop do Rosario. Thank you so much, Zainali, for introducing our tour to everybody. And now I have the honor of introducing you as well as the rest of the panelists. So, Zainali Yalo, Jalo, Jalo's academic and creative work have been co conveyed through fellowships at the Sundance Theater Institute, the Institute for World Literature, Harvard University, the Mellon School of Theater and Performance at Harvard, Institute for Di Cultural Diplomacy in Berlin, Residence uh, Theater Munich, Chateau de la Vanille, and House of Writers in Switzerland. Zainabu's award-winning plays include Onions Make Us Cry, White Elephants, and Holy Night. Thilani Dibba is a director and multidisciplinary artist of Polynesian West African descent. Her work focuses on the collision of different cultures through design-focused and ensemble-driven work. Her work has been presented at the World Theatre Congress, the Edinburgh Fringe, the New Ohio Theatre, and reviewed by the New York Times, Vulture, and the Scotsman. Bolani is an inaugural fellow at the Laboratory for Global Performance and Politics and a former Global Cultural Fellow at the University of Edinburgh. She holds a BSFS in International Relations from Georgetown University and an MFA in Directing from Columbia University. Uh, Ricardo Rosende, do my best uh, pronunciation, has a, um, has a master's degree in art history at the Escola de Comunicaux e Artes at the University of Sao Paulo. He has been working in the past uh, 25 years as curator in art institutions as, such as the Museo de Arte Contemporáneo, the Universidad de Sao Paulo, at the Museo, and at the Museo de Arte Moderna de Sao Paulo. Since 1996, he has been the curator and consultant on the Leo Nielsen project. And from March 2005 to March 2007, he was the director of the Museo de Arte Contemporáneo de Centro de Gao do Mar de Arte e Cultura in Fortaleza. Um, from 2009 to 2010, he was the director of Centro de Artes uh, Visualize, um, the fund of the National Art Department of the Ministry of Culture in Rio. And from 2010 to 2014, he worked as the general director of the Centro Cultural Sao Paulo. And since 2014, he has been honored to be the curator for Museo Bispo de Rosario Arte Contemporáneo. And last but not least, Camila Santos is a fiction writer from Brazil who has been living in New York City since 2004. Her work is in Ipapir, or is upcoming in the Literary, Columbia Journal, The New York Times, and elsewhere. Um, her work in Portuguese can be found in Rido Manifesto and is forthcoming in Coletania de Poesa, Mulherio de Sladas Atras, EUA. She holds an MFA in Creative Writing and Literary Translations from Queens College, and in 2020, she was named a Center for Fiction Emerging Writer Fellow. She's currently working on her first novel and a collection of short stories, um, and today she will be interpreting for Ricardo. All right. Hi, well, hello, everyone. Um, I hope I did you all justice. I'm so excited to have you all talking. Um, even though I have questions prepared, do feel free to you know jump in and out um, because this is your conversation. Um, so let's begin with performative historiography. Um, so performance artist Eleonora Fabio, in direct reference to Bishop de Rosario, refers to a specific kind of performative historiography historiography, one that is traversed by past, present, and future, by the individual, collective, imaginary, and sensorial marks, by a body that actualizes these dimensions through its movements and gestures. 
Beachbow himself could be considered a performer from how he carried himself and in the apparel he wore and his use of language. Um, do any of you feel that there's a way we can use this kind of performance to understand the different pasts he represents? Okay, I guess I could I could begin. Thank you, everyone. I have had such a wonderful time working on this project, and it's all thanks to the entire team. Uh, this is a question I've always, you know, tried to dissect with Hikado, because uh, Bishpo himself was someone who had a lot of self awareness. So the way he carried himself too was in a way that that seemed majestic or some kind of royalty from how he spoke it seemed like it was all a performance and we talked about this last week um hikado like he was quite intentional was quite deliberate about it almost seemed like a performance from all the documentaries and uh interviews i have seen of him and even images he seemed very deliberate about every single step he took, every word he spoke. So for me, it seems like it, it was some kind of performance. And with the with the utterances, you know, you could relate them to different pasts because he is a character that has many lives, you know, many phases of his life have been um really eventful on their own in a way that it seemed like it was just many man, many men in one man, so to speak. So maybe I throw the ball to you, um, Ricardo. I'm sorry. And there was some delay on the, on your speech, Zainabu, and I was out of uh, the video. Um, you made a question for me, yes. Is this no? Well, oh yeah, I, I was just um, yeah. telling them yeah, yeah. about. Okay, yeah, what we discussed last week regarding his. Performance. Yes, yes, the the last the first question. Uh, well, uh, in let's going to start the translation. No, come okay. Yes. Uh, Sim. Okay. In 22 de dezembro de 1938, à meia noite. Arthur Bispo do Rosário teve uma visão que, em que sete anjos anunciavam sua missão espiritual. On the 22nd of December of 1938, at midnight, Arthur Bispo do Rosário had a vision in which seven angels announced his spiritual journey. Like a performance, he, uh, ele deixou a casa onde residia, né? E trabalhava junto à família Leone no bairro de Botafogo, na cidade do Rio de Janeiro, e partiu em peregrinação até o mosteiro de São Bento, no centro da cidade. He left the house where he lived and worked for the Leone family in the uh, district, in the neighborhood of Botafogo, in Rio de Janeiro, and he left on a pilgrimage uh, to the monastery of São Bento in the city center to... Para se apresentar aos frades como aquele que veio julgar os vivos e os mortos. Sua via cruz durou dois dias. To present or to uh, introduce himself to the uh, friars uh, as the one who came to judge the living and the dead. Uh, yes. Okay. Looks like we lost him again. Okay. Yes. Uh, in Bispo, uh, caminhava para o centro da cidade para se apresentar aos frades, né? Como aquele que veio julgar os vivos e os mortos. Sua via cruz durou dois dias. So he went to uh, the monastery to present himself uh, to the friars. Um, as uh, having um, to be judged by the living and the dead, and his via crucis uh, lasted two days. 
caminhando sob o sol e a lua do verão carioca. Diante da sua as, anunciação... As he yeah. walked beneath the sun and the moon of the Carioca or the Rio de Janeiro summer. Diante da sua anunciação, na noite do dia 24 de dezembro. So, uh, after this uh, enunci enunciation, uh, in the evening of 24th of December, os frades chamaram a polícia que levou que o levou, que levou para o hospício né, da, da Praia Vermelha aquele homem negro que se apresentava como Jesus na noite de Natal. So after his declaration on the 24th of December, the friars uh, called the police, which took him to the psych ward in, in Praia Vermelha. Diagnosticado como portador de esquizofrenia paranoide, Bispo foi então transferido para a colônia de Juliano Moreira. He was diagnosed as paranoid schizophrenic and Bispo was then transferred to the psychiatric uh, ward in the colônia Juliano Moreira. Um dia eu simplesmente apareci. Era essa era a resposta do Bispo para aqueles que buscavam traçar sua biografia. One day I simply appeared, and this was the answer that Bispo would give to those who tried to draw his biography. Há controvérsias sobre sua data de nascimento. Consta no registro da Marinha de Guerra do Brasil de 1929 e o nascimento de Bispo do Rosário no dia 14 de maio de 1909, em Minas Gerais. There are some uh, controversies regarding his date of birth in his uh, in his birth certificate. It says uh, that he was born on the 14th of May of, uh, no, I'm sorry, that he was born in, sorry, could you repeat that, Ricardo? Uh, consta no registro da Marinha de Guerra do Brasil, de 1909, o nascimento de Bispo do Rosário, no dia 14 de maio de 1909, em Minas Gerais. Yes, so the date of his birth is 14th of May of 1909, in Minas Gerais, in the registries of the Navy, of the Brazilian Navy. Os pais, Adriano Bispo do Rosário e Blandina Francisca de Jesus. His parents were Adriano Bispo do Rosário and Blandina Francisca de Jesus. Na ficha de empregado da Light, onde Bispo trabalhou, está anotada a data de 16 de março de 1911. A naturalidade é em Sergipe, que é a mesma filiação. In the uh, employee registry of Light, where he worked, Uh, his birth date is registered as 16th of March of 1911, uh, and he's a natural of the state of uh, Sergipe with the same uh, parents as in the já other em, register. Já em outro registro, na Igreja Matriz de Nossa Senhora da Saúde, em Japaratuba, consta o batismo de uma criança de três meses, nomeada Arthur, no dia 5 de outubro de 1909. Os pais... Claudino Bispo do Rosário e Blandina Francisca de Jesus. In another uh, birth uh, certificate, so a third birth certificate, in the um, Matriz da Nossa Senhora da Saúde Church in Japaratuba, uh, there is a, excuse me, not a birth registry, a baptism registry. There is a baptism registry for a child of three months named Arthur, on the 5th of April of 1909, the parents, Claudino, Bispo do Rosário, and Blandina Francisca de Jesus. Em um dos seus fardões, bordou a palavra eu vim, acompanhada da data, a hora e seu ponto de partida. In one of his uniforms... Para aquela uh, peregrinação. So for that... Um, for that uh, pilgrimage, um, in one of his uh, uniforms, he weaved the words, I came, uh, which also had the date, the time, and uh, the point of, of 
leaving. Wow. Um, thank you. Are we ready to move on? Or is there a little bit more? Okay. Um, so I'd love, love to ask now about symbolic memory. Um, we know that Bishko spent some time in the Navy and grew up in the coastal town of Japaratuba, where ships and boats of all kinds are stamped in his memory. Can you say something generally regarding the role of sea vehicles and objects that relate to the sea? Velani, would you like to, to respond to that, that bit? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so we know that um, Bishpo was a sailor or he was in the Navy um, earlier on in his life. And later on, a lot of his artwork features really meticulously sewn or drawn um, or models of ships, sea of vehicles. Um, and you'll see coming up soon, uh, in the wonderful script that Zanabu has written that there um, are a lot of references to these ships. And so um, in the piece that you're about to hear, there's a wonderful connection between um, an awareness of those who have lived before him in Brazil, specifically those who came over on the Middle Passage and um, the, the ships and vehicles that he documented um, in, his, uh, in his artwork. So, you know, you can see at the museum, um, all of these things that he's created. And we can presume that a lot of, correct me if I'm wrong, Zambu, but um, we can presume that a lot of his intricate knowledge of how these vehicles were made and the detail in these art pieces can also be attributed to his time in the Navy. Um, we've spoken a little bit about in the, amongst the cast about, um, you know, what it, where his sort of artistry potentially came from. Um, and, I, and I, I personally think it's really interesting that a lot of people um, who have backgrounds in the Navy from the mid 20th century actually have a lot of artistic leanings as well, because um, there's a lot of overlap between the naval community and the artistic community, um, given that um, sailors in the Navy often worked with ropes, they worked with, you know, sort of building their own things, sewing their own things while they were out at sea. Um, so there's, there's sort of really a lot of interesting correlations between the different parts of his life and the the lives of those that he purported to document in his um, in his artwork later on. Yeah, and we also um, know that the town of uh, the city of Japaratuba is on on the coastline, and the past two months we was. Um, we actually had to look through different festivities of the town of Japaratuba, which included uh, something Hikado introduced us to, which was uh, the festival of the Shegansas, which were uh, naval officers who would return from a voyage and be celebrated in a Catholic church with all sorts of uh, pomp and pageantry. And it was quite interesting. And I, I imagine that his, his childhood was filled with all of these images that carry on to his drawings and his embroidery of ships and little models of rafts and all. But I, I took it a, a little further to try to make a connection with with the middle passage, which he never really mentions anywhere. But maybe uh, Ricardo has something to say about the presence of, of, of ships and and boats in his, his in his work. Oh, it seems we lost Ricardo. Um, to here, well, he'll come back shortly. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you've already kind of been bringing up like this question of African ancestry through your interest in the Middle Passage. Mm -hmm. So you could definitely talk about that in relation to boats. Um, and I know that in um, Bishbo's work, there's a strong Catholic presence um, and he seems to be very deeply connected in a way to ancestrality. Um, we could 
talk about the map of Africa and the costume of Eshu. Oh my God. Hi, Ricardo. So sorry. <laughs> Let me change. I'm going to change here my. Okay. to do this change at this moment, but okay. I think it will be better. Yes, okay. you hear me better now? Good. Yes? It yeah. does sound better. Yeah. Ok, bom, eu começaria para falar sobre essa presença do mar na obra do Bispo Rosário, contando sobre a chegança. So I would start to talk about the influence of, of sea vehicles in uh, Bispo's work by talking about the chegança. Uh, eu começo pela, pela chegança porque a obra do Bispo é uma obra feita da memória da memória da infância do artista, da memória da juventude dele, né? E do e do e do, do presente dele enquanto fazia a obra na colônia Juliano Moreira, né? So I start with uh, the chegança because a lot of, of Bispo's, Bispo's work uh, has to do with memory, with uh, childhood memory and also with the the present memory of his his lived experiences uh, in um, the colônia. A chegança é uma experiência cultural e religiosa secular, né? The Os séculos, is a ela vem secular, sendo repetida. The chegança is a secular and religious experience that uh, has happened uh, throughout uh, centuries. É, nessas cidades, né? Ali do Sergipe, é, Japaratuba, São Cristóvão, Laranjeiras que é uma das cidades mais antigas do estado, dessa região. So, in these cities, um, in Japaratuba, uh, Laranjeiras, uh, São Cristóvão, uh, in Sergipe, they have been happening uh, for a very long time. É uma região que preserva suas tradições culturais e religiosas, né? E uma, regi uma região que é uma das regiões mais... Uh, negras do país. Né? It's a region in in the in Brazil that preserves its African ancestry, and it's one of the um, oldest regions in in this in the country that preserves these uh, these manifestations. A chegança é um grande cortejo uh, que atravessa a cidade, né? vindo do porto. So the chegança is a, a very bit, a large procession that uh, goes through the city coming from the port. Nesse caso, Laranjeiras, que é uma cidade uh, com um porto fluvial, não um rio banha a cidade e um rio navegável que é por onde os portugueses chegavam uh, no interior do estado. So this uh, the the city also has a uh, a river. So this um, this procession uh, went through the river. Yeah. Esse grande cortejo é feito de blocos, né? Poderia dizer isso, né? E ele é, é, é encabeçado, né? Ele, ele começa com um cortejo de virgens, conhecida como taieiras. So this uh, procession. Um, is divided it starts with blocks and it starts with uh these um taieiras uh, which can be described as virgins um grupo formado por mulheres liderado por uma líder espiritual a locha it's uh made up of women uh, led by women um and a um The uh, locha is the leader of, of the women. É um cortejo uh, que toca instrumentos, né? It's a procession dança. that uh, dances and there are also musical instruments. Vestindo roupas uh, brancas com bastante cor, laços, fitas, né? They wear white uh, with also a lot of color, with ribbons, with colorful ribbons. Esta líder, This a locha, leader, the locha, the leader, deve se manter virgem por toda a vida. Não pode remain, ter contato físico com homens. She must remain a virgin throughout her life. She must not have any sexual contact with men. 
E as meninas, que devem ser virgens, the girls e quando must also perdem a virgindade, and when they do lose their virginities, eles, elas devem sair do grupo. They must leave the group. Esse grupo é precedido pelo, pelos marinheiros, né? a, que é a chegança. This group is preceded by the sailors, which is the chegança. Que é uma, 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 uma narrativa católica, religiosa, portanto. Né? It's a Catholic narrative, therefore. É, é, secular também, né? que, secular. que surgiu na, na Península Ibérica. That started in the Iberian Peninsula. É. E conta, na verdade, de marinheiros que saíram para o alto mar e se perderam. And it tells about uh, sailors who went into the, the, the sea and they were lost at sea. E fizeram uma promessa que a cada porto que eles passassem nessa volta para o encontro da casa, do seu, do, para o seu retorno, né? So they made a promise that at each port that they, um, that they came to, eles fariam uma festa. They would uh, throw a party or a, a que festivity. É esse cortejo. Which is que é esse this cortejo. procession. É. Esse cortejo, né? essa grande procissão This great procession. vai em direção à igreja do, do Nossa Senhora do Rosário, à Igreja dos Negros. It goes uh, to the Nossa Senhora do Rosário Church, which is the uh, Afro-Brazilian Church. É, é, e essa igreja fica numa colina, sobre um morro. Né? The church is on top of a hill. E é como se tivesse uma ascensão aos céus aí. And it's as if it's, it's going straight to the heavens. Dentro dessa igreja, as, as, as talheiras chegam primeiro. So inside the church, the first ones to arrive are the talheiras. E é, são coroadas ali a rainha, as rainhas, né? They are crowned as queens. E chegam também... A, né, os marinheiros, a chegança, né? And then the sailors arrive, or the chegança, the sailors are called the chegança. E ali eles fazem uma encenação com cânticos e danças. And then there, there is um, almost as if it's a uh, performance of uh, singing and dancing. E o movimento que eles fazem é como se fosse o movimento das ondas do mar. And the, the movements of this dance, it's as if it's the, the waves and the cadence of the waves. Depois, ao término desse, dessa, dessa apresentação, eles retornam sempre de frente para o altar. So after this dance, this presentation, they, they, eles alternam? Eles retornam oh, sempre they... olhando para o altar. Nunca dando they, as costas. They go back, but always facing, they leave the church, but always facing the altar, never, never giving um, their back to the church or to e the o altar. O cortejo volta para o centro da cidade e no entorno da matriz. And so the procession goes back to the city center and at the church. E ali acontece uma, uma série de encenações de lutas entre os mouros e os católicos, né? And then there are a series of um, fights that are um, performed um, to represent the fights between the Catholics and the, and the Moors. E a gente pode observar também ali nessa, nessas manifestações uh, culturais, religiosas, né? We can also observe that in these cultural and religious manifestations, as raízes do carnaval que a gente vê nas grandes cidades brasileiras, nas cidades brasileiras. The the roots of of carnaval that are seen all over um, the big cities in Brazil. É, em uma cidade específica, em São Cristóvão, que era a antiga capital do Sergipe. 
in a specific city, uh, São Cristóvão, which used to be the capital of the state of Sergipe. Os marinheiros se apresentavam com grandes veleiros, nas, com grandes embarcações na sua frente. Uh, the sailors would um, present themselves with, with these big rafts um, in front of them. E eu conto dessa da, 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 da chegança para que a gente para entender que tudo isso está na obra do Bispo do Rosário. And I'm telling you about the chegâncias because this is all present in uh, Bispo de Rosário's work em sua grande performance. And in his uh, big performance. Great performance, I should say. Mm -hmm. yes. Lovely. Thank you so much. Um, you, both you and uh, Zainabu have touched a lot on African um, ancestry and kind of blackness and meaning. Um, so if Zainabu, if there's anything you'd like to add to that, talking about like, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, actually, there's there's one of uh, the suits he created and a headpiece uh, called Eshu, uh, Kappa G Eshu. And even though he does not make reference or he's never really spoken out about his African ancestry, what we discovered was that in the town of Japaratuba, you know, you like uh, Ricardo said, there quite a lot of um, African-derived religions such as Candomblé or Umbanda. And it's kind of interesting how he, out of all of the iconography or representations from these religions, uh, the Kappa Jishu comes up because Eshu is the deity of the crossroads, something that Arthur Bishpo himself identifies with in terms of being a messenger between the living and the dead and Eshu being the deity, um, the messenger deity between um, the heavens and, and the mortals. So one of the questions I asked was if he was even involved in, in any of this um, spiritual activities or if he perhaps even saw himself as Eshu, the messenger, who funnily is also a trickster and nothing can, no ceremony can commence without veneration to Eshu, for instance, uh, within Condomble. And he is referenced, you know, even, even, uh, by the other deities as one who has the ear of the of the most high god so it's interesting how this comes up in in one of his uh pieces so that way i, I take up on that as well as as um some kind of consciousness of his african heritage perhaps um someone else has something to say about it but i found that really interesting that it came up so i i just um latched onto that and ran away with it so to speak in in my in my in one of the scenes where he 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 references issue as the lord of the labyrinth which is something he uh, bispo also is referred to yeah yeah, yeah. well uh, bispo tinha uma consciência da sua ancestralidade né bispo Africana. had a conscience of his uh, african an ancestrality é evidente que, é, é, que ele era um leitor quanto mais, um leitor é, interessado em geografia, em política, em geopolítica. He was interested, uh, he was a reader interested in, in geopolitics, in politics. 
A gente pode observar isso neste mapa, por exemplo, feito que ele faz da África, nas faixas de mísseis. We can nos... faixas faixas de uh, mísseis. Miss. Okay. The beautiful uh, woman. Oh, okay. <laughs> the Miss Universe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can observe this in the in the African uh, map that he drew, uh, in the uh, women uh, Nisi. É, o, o bispo era muito interessado por esse concurso que nos anos 50 era muito importante o concurso das misses de Miss Universo, né? Oh. Então ele fez uma série de de, 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 de faixas de misses aonde aparecem essas informações de geopolítica de política. Okay. Dos países. So this is this is the translator talking now. I, I had misheard what Ricardo said, so I just want to um, explain what, what he had meant um, before. Uh, faixas de Misses are the um, in the beauty contests, like the Miss Universe and Miss Brazil contests, it's the the sash that they wear. Um, so uh Bispo also had made these these sashes, these beauty beauty pageant sashes, I guess I would call it. Sim. E ali a gente percebe vários países africanos. É, o que a gente sabe é que o bispo não fez grandes viagens internacionais ou não fez nenhuma viagem internacional. What we know is that bispo uh, has not Como marinheiro, did, né? As as a sailor, he when he was a sailor that he he did not go abroad, probably, most likely. Uh, mas essas informações vêm na sua obra, né? E o que a gente observa é que ele fez um, um sincretismo religioso e cultural, né? But Misturando. O que yeah. What we can observe um, is uh, that even though he didn't, uh, most likely didn't travel abroad, um, the foreign ele... was present in his work and he did um, in his work he does a a religious and cultural syncretism misturando catolicismo candomblé ubanda vodum nago e o espiritismo uh, mixing catholicism uh, in the african religions of candomblé ubanda vodum nago and uh, spiritualism misturando passado e presente dessas manifestações religiosas. Né? Uh, mixing the past and the present of these religious manifestations. Em uma viagem que fizemos já para Tuba, Laranjeiras e Aracaju. In a trip that we took to Japaratuba, Laranjeiras and Aracaju. Tivemos a oportunidade de conhecer terreiros, quilombos e todas as manifestações religiosas sincréticas. Uh, we had the opportunity uh, to see the tejeiros or the, the meeting, religious meeting places of these African religions, the quilombos um, and other uh, syncretism, syncretatic uh, religious manifestations. E em, em meio a uma paisagem agrária em que predominava a planta as plantações de cana-de-açúcar, And in the midst of a, a very um, uh, rural um, environment, uh, the, the sugar cane plantations are, are the, the prevalent um, ones in that scenery. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, esse é o ambiente onde nasceu e cresceu o bispo. Né? A sua infância passada em Japaratuba deve ter sido passada nesses quilombos, né, que a gente encontrou ali. So that is the the ambience that is um, the the place where he he lived or he, he was born and he he grew up uh, most likely his uh, childhood and um, early years adolescence were, were probably spent in these quilombos or in one of the quilombos in uh, Japaratuba. E, e, e a gente pode observar esses objetos, essas peças, essas coisas do mundo, como a gente observou esta peça que é um moedor de cana, é o que ele traz na obra dele, são as suas memórias da infância, né? Uh, and we can observe these things in, in his uh, in his work, 
um, such as the uh, sugarcane mills. Um, so the, the things that he he lived in his uh, in his um, youth are present in his works. E, no, e com relação às igrejas, uh, as, matri as matrizes uh, religiosas africanas? And, uh, re and regarding the, the African religions such as uh, Candomblé? Como a, a Zainabu já falou um pouco? As Zainabu has already uh, touched upon? Uh, no Candomblé, uh, uh, o Exu, né? se apresenta como um mensageiro de Deus, né? In, in Candomblé, Exu, the deity Exu, uh, presents as a, a messenger of God. Como Exu na Ubanda, bispo vai ficar entre os vivos e os mortos. Like Exu in Ubanda, uh, bispo is, is going to remain between the living and the dead com a missão, como missão entre os vivos e os mortos, vai listar os seus nomes. And in in this mission between the living and the dead, he will list their names. Os nomes das pessoas para nunca deixá-las caírem no esquecimento. The names of the people so that they will never fall into oblivion or or they will never be forgotten para relembrá-los diante de Deus, naquele encontro final em que passaria uma multidão na forma de uma procissão. So that he, they can be remembered um, in front of God uh, in that final uh, hour, in that final uh, meeting with God, uh, in which there will be a, a multitude in the form of a procession. Carregando todas as coisas do mundo which they will also be carrying all of the things in the world. Como ele escreveu, uma obra que levou 1986 anos para ser organizada. Like he wrote uh, uh, a work that took 1986 years 18. to be... 86. Oh, 18, 86, 1986, 86, 86 years. That doesn't make sense, but I just translated, sorry. 86 <laughs> years to be organized. <laughs> um, he would really be a um, He was actually, Abispo was actually a visionary. Uh, he heard voices that, um, that took him to the future. Faz isso, faz aquilo. Era uma missão e para Ficar essa ali. missão recorria a Deus, a Jesus e a Exu, tornando-se uma entidade só. He did this, he did that. Um, it was a mission that um, that uh, he recourse to God, to Jesus and to um, Exu, um, turning them into a single entity. Yes. I'm going to have to interrupt you both. I'm so sorry. It was so fascinating. That's okay. <laughs> yes. But I just wanted, the, we have about four minutes, and I just wanted to ask um, quickly each of you how um, Bishbo has changed you or your art or your work before we get into the reading, which I'm so excited for. So, yeah. Okay. Would you like to start, Filani? Sure, I definitely can. Okay. Um, <laughs> So I was introduced to the script, uh, to, the, to the concept of the script, only about a month ago. So Bishpo has been in my life for only a short period of time. Um, but in reviewing a lot of the research that Zainabu shared with us, um, I've I've been really struck by um, the, the power that she gives his perspective. Um, a lot of you know, there's a lot of focus on um, his mental health diagnosis. But what I think is really powerful about the script that she's written is that it it focuses on the way the world looked from his point of view. Um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful perspective. So, um, you know, I've, I've been really struck this past month by um, the dedication that it takes to, and the passion it takes to go through life on a journey or on a mission that those around you may not know about 
or be privy to. Um, and, and, you know, seeing all the things that he was able to create um, has just made me think a lot about, you know, the perspectives of those that we embody in the work that we create ourselves as artists. Um, so that's been a really exciting thing to sort of dive into uh, throughout rehearsals. And for me, I'd say uh, there's just so much to to learn from the life of Bishpo as well. I mean, I always would uh, keep asking the question, like, how does he know the things he knows? You know, he 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 had this wealth of knowledge. Where at some point he even made an analogy of. Uh, Russia invading Afghanistan and um, in describing how he felt invaded as well. He read the newspapers quite often and so he was well aware of what was going on uh, globally in the world and also I, I work with material culture on a daily as my, my, my regular job so dealing with objects is another thing. I, I, I mean he gives us um, very interesting ways of seeing everyday objects as objects as being polyvocal, as being heuristic entities. You know, a pen is not just a pen anymore once it's once it's um, defamiliarized or put into some other context. So in that way, it's um, I, I've learned a lot from him in repurposing objects and making meanings out of them. Also, he he was quite meticulous, hardworking, quite determined and passionate, sometimes very rarely compassionate as well. So these are desirable qualities, I believe, that one would want to have. So in that way, I mean, there's he's been quite an inspiration ever since I came in contact with him and his work or his work more or less yeah so to speak so um yeah if you, thought, if you have something quick to share yeah. send a question <laughs> <laughs> because there, oh. was, there was something here on my phone <laughs> i'm sorry Oh, uh, how, how has yeah. this changed you? For me? She, uh, yeah. <laughs> how the works changes my life? <laughs> yeah, this is the question. Uh, um, a primeira vez que eu tive contato com o Bispo do Rosário foi quando eu montava uh, exposições no Museu de Arte Contemporânea da Universidade de São Paulo. First time I came in contact with uh, Bispo de Rosário's work was when I um, was at the Museu de Arte Contemporânea. É, eu, isso é 1990, quando a exposição veio do Rio de Janeiro para São Paulo. This was in, the, in 1990, when the exhibition came from Rio de Janeiro to São Paulo. Eu fui responsável por abrir todas as caixas da obra do bispo. I was responsible. For, I was the one responsible for opening all of the boxes that contained his works. E levá-las para a parede. <laughs> and, and take them to the wall. É, eu fiquei. A primeira coisa que aconteceu comigo, fiquei com uma rinite alérgica. Para sempre. The first thing that happened to me was that I developed severe allergies for the rest of my life. Foi uma surpresa muito grande, obviamente. Eu não tinha uh, ideia ou dimensão daquela obra. It was a huge surprise, obviously, and I had no idea of the dimensions of that of the work. E como Todos que visitaram aquela exposição, que descobriram o bispo naquela exposição, público e artistas que foram ver. And, and as it was for every person who went to that exhibition, the public and the artists who came to see his work. A grande descoberta. The, the é, essa obra discovery. virou para gente. Essa obra virou para gente um grande fantasma sobre a arte brasileira. 
So the huge discovery was that this work became for us the a very big uh, ghost um, or specter uh, of Brazilian arts. Uh, não há uma compreensão, não há uma interpretação possível pela história da arte. Through the history of art, there is no comprehension or interpretation for this work. Pela história da arte. Through the, through the history of art. A obra nos faz repensar tudo que nós conhecemos por arte. His work makes us rethink everything that we view as art or viewed as art. É uma obra que nos traz questionamentos, nos coloca questões que não temos respostas, na verdade. It's, it's a, a work that makes us question things and, and raises issues that we don't have the answer for. Uma obra que foi construída dentro de um manicômio. It's a work that was made inside a psychiatric institution. Como uma necessidade vital para a sobrevivência ao as, longo do tempo. As a vital necessity for survival throughout the time there. É uma obra que nos fala das coisas simples do mundo, não? It's a work that talks about the simple things of life. É um acúmulo de coisas, né, do nosso cotidiano. An accumulation of of everyday things. Que a gente costuma não dar a mínima importância ou mínimo valor. That we usually don't give any uh, importance to or value to. Essa obra tem uma função. This work has uh, the function of. Como o bispo, como o próprio bispo dizia. As bispo himself would say uma organização do caos do mundo. The organization of the world's chaos. Uma obra utópica. It's a um, utopic work. Que nos fala de imortalidade. That talks about immortality. De vida. Life, de morte, death, e como eu poderia dizer, and how can I say, persistência, persistence, de preservar um mundo ideal, <laughs> to preserve an ideal world. Oh, thank This you, keep going, Ricardo. Yeah, that was beautiful. Um, and now we get to see. Um, the excerpt of um, a divine mission and see a little bit of each book. A Divine Mission, working title, a play based on the life and art of Arthur Bispo do Rosario by Zena Bujala. Madmen are like hummingbirds, they never land. They stay two meters off the ground. Arthur Bispo do Rosario. Situation five. What lies on the ocean bed? Darkness. Sounds of roosters from afar. Closely followed by the sounds of many feet shuffling, metals clanking. Chains. Doors opening and closing. Voices begin to hum in harmony. Dim lights, enough to see Arthur Bispo's frame on a wooden bed. On the wall, we see silhouettes of people shuffling along. He is curled up in a fetal position. The seraphs hover about him. They split into two groups and position themselves at the foot and head of his bed. Arthur Bispo tosses and turns. The humming breaks into a chant then muffled cries. 
Water, sound of waves, seabirds and distant foghorn almost drown the humming. Water. Night. You were a sailor again. The great mother beneath you. Before you. Water, great mother. Arise. Awakes slowly and sits up with a wide smile. He reaches for his sailor's cap. I was not asleep. We know. Tonight I was a sailor again. I steered, I made it to the ocean. Calm, yet uneasy, echoes from beneath. Full lights. The seraphs, light on their feet, flutter towards what appears to be a blank wall. With a graceful demeanor, Arthur Bispo reaches for his robe and slippers. He sits in a chair and waits. Darkness. Then lights pour in from the wall. I was at sea today in my sailor suit. Did you see me? Did you? We must have. You couldn't have missed me. I was the tiny dot, that tiny dot in blue pajamas sailing. A sailor suit or pajamas? They are both blue. You were sailing too far into the fog. You saw me then. Your occupation. There is little time. I know. I allow myself those modest pleasures. I have returned dampened. Dampened? You see, I saw the things I felt at sea, the fathers of my fathers flowing to Japaratuba where they make their lifelong acquaintance with fields of kanaji asuka, the sweetness of sugar against the sharpness of agony. But grandfather, dearest grandfather, it must have been him because my eyes, they got lost in my face smiling with all the familiar voices from below. Foghorn. A living man guided by the spirits of the great passengers who are, in all truth, compasses. I made a map with all the coordinates, you see, of the homeland. But sturdy humankind, my kind, assembled on the coastline, inhaling, ingesting, containing the remnants of majesty, tucked within unreachable to the monstrous other, lest that be taken away too. But it returns. Once again, majesty roams free. Of which you wear. Foghorn. Sea vehicles adorned with flapping flags of the empire in the westerlies towards humankind, my kind. Decks stuffed, flags flapping yet again into the trade winds, so I set out today into the phantasms of my Anchi Posadas, for whom the seabed remains an everlasting home. The ocean is no longer a villain. She never was. She is the keeper of echoes. Today, my many spirits are damp. I have hung them out to dry on the line, right between two mangaba trees. I do not use any pegs. They hang. Try them speedily. There is little time. But I was washed ashore, finally free to commence my mission. Out of body. You meet yourself in a different state. I have fashioned 21 sailboats. Vinci e umvalerios. A magnificent raft. Umo jungada. Magnifica. And many other sea vehicles with superior flags to transmit the multitude of echoes. You must build more. These are not sufficient for each echo to come aboard. You must take an inventory. My obligation squeezed me into a bottle 
It threw me into the raging seas where I spent a few nights. I couldn't stretch my legs as I wanted, but one bears this burden gracefully. Voices commanding, designating, directing, while my body, accompanied by seven angels, roamed the streets, seeing things anew from Botafogo, up the steps of Candelaria, and then to the monastery of Sao Bento, with a luminous cross upon my back so bright it scorched. I came ashore to be delivered as the sanctified messenger and the friars beheld you. They beheld me and my luminous cross, the one to judge the living and dead. And their eyes. Their eyes recognized the color of my aura. My work had begun. The beginning of seeing things with my new eyes and hearing distinct voices that were only distant celestial whispers of machines flying in the sky and echoes from those who were here before us. Situation six, dreaming dreams of dreams. Arthur Bispo sits in a spacious room before a chessboard he has just finished making. Other of his creations lie about the room tidily. We hear the mewing of a cat. Bispo de Rosario may move one square in any direction, but when he tries to move, things hinder him. What things? Things like you. Cat mews. Abstinence, dear cat, abstinence. Cat mews. Food is a hindrance, dear one. I have my coffee, but you loathe coffee. You are already strong on some high frequency, as it were. God knows what a few drops of coffee will do you, your cat brain. Go on to the eating room. Some scattered grains from unstable hands, shaken by madness, will be on the floor. Cat mews. Madness? Have you no madness? When my stomach stays empty, my faith is stronger, my strength is fortified. In that state, I represent things clearer. It is written. I have to represent existing things like a hungry cat and the woes of the world, that's it. We asked about madness. What madness? The kind that spills things on the floor. What about it? People have begun to invent things. Cat muse. Footsteps. Things you invent? The chessboard. I do not invent things. I represent them. Representing life while it's being lived. It is easier to store rings of smoke in my pockets. Traces, perhaps. In that moment you blink, it evaporates. So the faculty needs to be alert and organized, and before the storage fills up, I make something of it. But you are a demiurge, are you not? Yes, one who organizes all the mess. Sometimes, suddenly, the heavens speak fiercely at me in familiar phrases, allowing me the gift of molding, of bringing to birth. I become a god of diminutive, important things. You are a demiurge. You are. People have begun to invent things in order to make sense of human mysteries. But the mystery of the mind is a different kind. You know that, do you not? Inventing things like flying machines, submarines? Inventing things like psychiatrists. They are unhappy people. A hoarse voice is heard from the door. Madness is not happiness. Madness, no one understands. No one, I say. Madness is a sadness like any other, and you hide it. You hide it with a smile, with a smile, I say. Doesn't mean that we are happy. Who let you out? Who let him out? Being mad is not a happy business. Pose apart. The day of truth we await. The judgment day. Now, go away. 
Get some sleep. It is very bad behavior to eavesdrop, to partake in a conversation you are not invited to. Before then, allow me light the right end of your cigarette. I do not smoke. <laughs> <laughs> you did not fall on that luxury, did you? <laughs> oh, now allow me some peace. I'd give anything for a cigarette. Even if it was a dying one on the curb about to be stepped upon by a stranger's shoe soles. We messed him up. Sounds like he sat in the chair. The wire sent arrows directly to my heart. To my heart, I say twice. <laughs> my heart grows and will soon explode. Boom! Do you hear me? <laughs> it did not cure any madness. How do you know you are mad then? It does not cure the description of madness, the christening, the designation, the appellation. I am here on a different kind of assignment. You must take your sadness and growing heart away. I could be happier. Never said I was sad. You go now. Go. I do not hear your feet taking you away. We hear the intruder walking away reluctantly. You wouldn't know me if you saw me. Always in your own lofty universe, Otto Bispo, the lord of the madhouse. That was no patient fellow. One must cultivate patience. He paces around the room with a slight limp, takes up a large piece of cloth with embroidery work, and begins to sew. Saturdays are your favorite days. You rest a little more. You have some calmness. In no time, when my work is done, there will be a flat earth once again. No valleys and mountains and seas that prevent us from seeing each other face to face flat. All peoples and things. Both Vitruvian and modular figures, can you tell me what is missing from them? Clothes? We are not conceived with clothes. What then? Words. Simply hollow encasements. As my fingers and the needles share similar tongues in striking awkwardness, I dream of the many words that make up the world and of the limitless grains of words that cover the earth. <laughs> The Vitruvian and the modular do not utter a syllable. Now, is that not the saddest thing you have ever heard? What is a being without words? That was wonderful. Bava to Pilani and to Zenayu. Thank you so much. That was great. And I'd actually love to, we have about 10 minutes. Um, and so I'd love to ask about what it was like staging this, uh, this excerpt, what challenges you both experienced or good parts. Sandra, I don't know if you want to start with writing or I can begin with talking about the rehearsal, but. Oh, okay, I, I could, I, I just have uh, one major challenge, which was, um, first of all, I was for the first time writing about an iconic character, one who was real and well known as well. So in this case, you know, I was faced with the problem of representation. And sometime last year when I met with Ricardo, what I told him was, you know, I, I think I have an idea of how um, Arthur Bishpo should be represented. I had seen a couple of monologues that were staged about, about him and his, his language. And in a way I thought, no, this is not this, I, I just feel like 
he is not this um, stark, raving, mad personality. He was always, um, always meticulous in the way he carried himself, the way he spoke with a lot of dignity. And that's what I would like to, that's what I would like to evoke with this character. So for me, it was the fact that this was a very popular, known character and iconic as well. So my representation of him was what I was preoccupied with. It, I couldn't get away with just anything. So the research took probably 80% of all the work that has been put into this because I just really needed to know every single detail, if he had a limp, if he walked or not, and the kind of things he would say. So we went through a lot of transcriptions of... Um, documentaries or his interviews just to know the poetics of his language how his delivery was and all of that and his vocabulary as well so for me that was the the huge challenge and I'm still not so confident about how the rest of the play would go but it's something I'm extremely cautious of and this is not something I worry about with my other plays so that makes this exceptional in a way. Yeah, and just to add on to that, um, one of the great gifts in this script is that um, it doesn't lean into, like Zainabu said, the sort of uh, stereotypical depictions of someone who's been diagnosed with schizophrenia, which I think is something that's, that can be really um, easy to, to sort of use as a crutch when it comes to depicting someone who, who has such a, um, who's, who's so well known and is so strongly associated with that diagnosis. And, um, what I this is this this was less of a challenge and, and just more of a, a fun thing to explore. Um, you know, the first scene takes place, um, or both scenes actually take place in a conversation between Bishbo and the Seraphs, and um, it's it's sort of wonderful to to delve into his perspective and and if you can hear both sides of those conversation, um, you know, it doesn't sound anything but sane. Um, and so to, to sort of watch him juggle the, um, I, one of the things that's sort of great about the second scene is we get to watch him juggle having this conversation, but also having um, input from, from the more physical world and watch him, you know, struggle to sort of deal with both of those while maintaining on his mission. Um, and so that's, that's something that we, we spend a lot of time sort of fine tuning in rehearsal to make sure that, um, you know, it's, it's not, um, the depiction of a man who is who is insane and then you know no one else we see them from the outside it's more of a depiction of a man from his point of view um, with us being privy to all the things that he has to juggle at the same time thank you yeah um, we are taking audience questions we have time for about one um, and if but if there are no questions um, can wrap up. I can say my thank yous. Okay. In case if anything comes in, I'll let you know. But um, I would like to say thank you to, ev to everyone on this panel. Thank you, Camille. Thank you, Luani. Thank you, Sanabu. Thank you, Ricardo. It is so important that we spread the message of Bishpo do Rosario and his messages and his art. Um, and so this is just one one way to do that. And it's I think people will really really be affected um, in a good way. Um, and so, as I said earlier, this is one event in a series of events. There's two more events happening tomorrow and Thursday as part of our 2021 Residency for Black Women Theater Makers. Um, so please uh, visit our website for more information and please um, continue to engage with Zainabu, Vilani, and Cam Camila and Ricardo's work. They're all artists in their own right and deserve your attention and care. Um, so. With that, I'd like to say thank you everyone for attending um, and thank you for this lovely conversation and um, yeah, thank you. <laughs>